You know, I think this poster could use just a little bit more pizzazz. Just need something. Ah, uh, there it is. You probably heard this one before. Don't crank up the saturation. It makes my eyes bleed. If I catch you doing that one more time, I'm going to- Well, yes, but there's an important part they forgot to tell you. This is relatable to photography and drawing, by the way. When you hit the control U and crank that slider, it takes all the hues and maxes them out. Looks awful. Why? Well, other than giving things the wrong color, it is best said with an analogy. Think of an image as a room full of people. The more hues of colors you put into that image, the more people are in said room. And those people are talking at a bunch of different colors and the room becomes crowded, like a restaurant. Not necessarily too loud. You can still hear in the room fairly well. It's just not crystal clear. It's kind of moody in a way. It's when you take that saturation slider and crank it, all of a sudden, everyone is screaming. It's like a concert, except without the music. The room has gone into chaos. The door handle has melted off, and everything is on fire. So, colors talk to each other. And without getting into theory too much, that'll be for another time, if you have a lot of fully saturated colors on the screen, a conversation can't even happen. Ah! But that doesn't mean colors shouldn't ever be saturated. Let's go back into the room analogy. Let's take this red dude and make him way louder than the others. The others silently talk to each other, but he is the main speaker, the entertainer. All of a sudden, there's a clear dominant presence in the room, yet everyone can still talk to each other. Even by just taking the previously overly saturated image and masking out only the red part, the image already begins to look better. I touched this in my composition video already, like a few years ago. Don't forget big, medium, small. Or, if it's easier to think about, 70-30 or 80-20 rules. 30% of the red on the screen looks better than 50% of red on the screen. Clear distinctions. A lot of this, or a little of that. Never 50-50. Unless it's really, really intentional. You know, the standard art rule. Programs like Lightroom, Darktable, and other stuff have the ability to take individual hues in an image and set their contrast settings to the user's wishes. But if you don't have that, there are other workarounds. As I mentioned, masking out works. Paint overs work, layer modifications work, messing with the curves on specific wavelengths work, etc, etc. The point is to do it. Color temperature. This isn't a painting video, so I won't bore you with it too much. All you need to know is that there is a warm and a cool. OMG, OMG, I don't want to re-record this part, so this is what you're getting. Color temperature is based off of what you're comparing it to. Which is why 100% red is more hot than a 50% red. Which is still hotter than a 20% blue. Which is still hotter than a 50% blue. Okay, maybe this is making sense or maybe it isn't. Let's dumb it down. Our brains like the difference between warm and cool. Partially because of how light works in real life. But, the important part is to treat your warm and cools in ratios. 70-30 again is a good one. If your lights are warm, then it usually looks more natural if your shadows are cool. How cool? That's up to real life, or the artist. To be honest if you're skilled enough you can make almost anything work, sorta. Anyway if your lights are cool, you usually will get warm shadows. There are some exceptions in very specific lighting environments but again for now that's fine. One last note, it doesn't need to be orange and blue. It's a popular choice, but all color hues are either warmer or cooler than another. Now it's time for probably the reason why you clicked on this video, the gradient map. This is a very powerful tool, just a bit finicky to get the hang of. But once you do get the hang of it, it automatically becomes one of the most overpowered ones. Clip studio, edit, tonal correction, gradient map, layer, new correction layer, gradient map, Photoshop, image, adjustments, gradient map, layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. Color balance is always someplace nearby. Okay, bye. You can use it directly on the image, but I find using an adjustment layer saves some headaches. You know, the good old non-destructive editing, blah, 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 blah. You can do that with color balance too, by the way. This takes your contrast range on the image, you know, from black to white, and reassigns those values and colors to whatever colors you want. Click to make a box, assign it to a color, drag it around to control its range, delete it if you hate it. Left is pure black, right is pure white. People have a lot of presets out there, so you can either make your own or download other people's ones. Or I drop tool from videos that you see people use. <laughs> One thing you may have noticed is, hey, 
My scout from TF2 was on red team. I can't tell he's on red team anymore. It's okay. Scout from red team will be right back. We just need to explore our options. One thing I think I may have said, probably, in my first tutorial is to use the scroll wheel to see what different layer modes do. Because you may find a few specific instances where one will work better than another, maybe. Okay, this isn't gonna be a tutorial, but I'm just gonna give you guys a quick rundown of what's happening on screen. If you want specifics, just slow down the video. Gradient map with nice separation in the tones. Set it to pin light, lower the opacity. Another gradient map with cool colors set to overlay to make the ground and sky nicer while masking out this other stuff so the reds don't dull. Another gradient map with different cool colors set to soft light. Mess it around, then up to the saturation in some areas, added a gradient on screen and overlay from the top for sunlight. Lighten and overlay orange to exaggerate the contrast between warm and cool. Some simple paint over stuff. If you put pure black on top of everything and set it to color, it'll allow you to see the values a little bit more clearly. Make sure things that you want to stand out, stand out. Otherwise, you'll have washed out values. If you use a curves adjustment layer, you can set it to brightness so they don't mess up the saturation. Apply a metal gradient map, set it to overlay, and put it on the glasses, dog tag, and some other stuff to give it more bite. Using varied techniques like this, you can pick and choose aspects that you like from each one, uh, not only from gradient maps, but all sorts of aspects, while still keeping the parts that you want to keep. Masking. Don't forget masking. Or the room analogy. There are ways to get around the rules of the loud people in the room, but... See, that one takes a little bit more of a conversation. Oh, okay, maybe that'll be a drawing video one day. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. It's It's been a minute since the last SFM one. Figured you guys would like a little simple tutorial on how to make better colors since I remember for the longest time the advice was turn your saturation down, never turn it up. And that's, um, I mean, it makes it, it, makes it have more harmony, I guess. It, it's not like that doesn't work. Some of the gradient maps work on that principle. I tend to like highly saturated stuff from time to time, so... I'm probably gonna return to regular uploads, although I'm probably gonna end up shooting for once a month, and if it goes longer than that, uh... Yeah, something like that. No clue on how many of you get this far, but thanks. And if you have any video ideas, let me know. Have a good.